So, uh, E, you got the key to my heart? Uh. Hi, James Mingvid. I would like to give you three keys on small talk. And if your case, in case you're wondering what small talk is, it's something all of us do. It doesn't matter if we're meeting strangers or even people we know. But as an English student or someone studying English, I would like to give you a reason why small talk is especially important for you. Okay? So let's go to the board and uh, I'll explain why. So what is small talk? Okay, there are three things I would say. One is a way to meet someone new. Right? So uh, you, you're standing by a bus and you ask somebody, so how's the weather? You're engaging in a conversation to meet someone. You can both stand silent, but this way you get to meet new people. And that's just fun in itself. Right? Makes life more interesting to know different types of people. Number two, build a relationship. Okay, so you're not meeting someone at the bus stop. You've met them a few times. Well, if you just say, how's the weather and walk away, eh, you'll never have, have a relationship. Meeting is the first part. You meet someone, but how do we build that relationship? Well, you take small talk and it helps lead to doors where we get to know things that are important to people to make for deeper conversation, more interesting conversation. So if you were thinking small talk is more like an appetizer at a meal. If you're ordering steak and french fries, you have a salad first and you eat the salad get, to get ready for something bigger. Because maybe at that moment you just want to sit and relax and you don't want to just put steak and potato and beer in your mouth. And you want to engage in a small conversation with people. So small talk is that way to build to the next meal or the main course, a deeper relationship. Right? Because once you've got, you know, how's the weather? And someone says, I like, I don't like it because it's cold. And the other person says, I like it because cold means I can ski. You can say, you like to ski? That's cool. How long have you been? See how that works? And the third reason we do small talk, because it's just fun. It's fun to go out there and engage in the world and other people. Okay? So, this is what small talk is, but how does it help you as a student, right? Why is it important for you as a student? Well, here are three reasons why. Number one, practice, practice, practice. Your pronunciation sucks. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. But <clears throat> you need pronunciation skills. Uh, practice. When you're talking to someone, small talk is short, a short enough period of time that you can practice things, drills, because You'll say them again and again. How is the weather? You know, hot enough for you? Things like that. So you get to work on pronunciation. And it's short enough that you can take the lesson you learn, take it home with you to practice. Also, your listening skills. Small talk isn't you just talking like me on the video. I do all the talking. You actually have to listen like you are now. And you're going to find out very quickly that I don't care how many English speakers you meet, none of them sound the same. We all have different backgrounds and you know, histories. Some people were born in Canada, some in the United States. Some in the south of the United States, you know what I'm saying? They're not born where you think they're born, so it's kind of hard to understand what they're saying to you, boy. Pay attention when I'm talking to you. And you go, what did he just say? Well, what he said to you was, pay attention, please, because he's speaking English. Don't you understand? All English, all different. So every person you interact with is giving you something, okay? So listening skills you get to work on. Next, so many students ask, how can I stop translating in my head? I can't stop it. Engage in small talk, which means participate in small talk. If it's really small talk, it's very quick. You don't have time to translate everything. By the time you're done, the conversation's done. So it's a good way to stop you from translating because the real conversation is too fast. If I know you don't speak English, I'm going to slow down, and that's not what you want. Like, hot enough for you? They don't know you speak English and you go, yes, these very hot. Why you ask? They go, oh, because it's hot outside. Hot. <laughs> and they change the way they're speaking. But if you get that practice with the pronunciation and listening skills and enough small talk, you can respond quickly and they will keep speaking quickly. And that is great. The final thing is you get new friends. Like I told you, it's fun. But these friends will keep you practicing, which is where we go back to number one. The initial practice of small, small talk lets you know how well am I doing. It's like a test. 
Then you get to stop that problem of translation, which slows down your conversation. And finally, you get a new friend who's going to help you practice even more. Small talk. Small wonder we don't do it more. Anyway, let's go to the board so I can give you a bit more of this particular lesson. Actually, we'll give you things you can work on to improve your small talk so we can get this all working for you. Okay? So what are my three keys to small talk? You must be wondering. Well, I'm going to give them to you right now. One, give them to me at Rio. Give them to you right now. One, two, and three. They look like slices of pie. All right? So the first key to getting the benefits of small talk has nothing to do with the small talk itself. It's with your mental state or your brain, your mind. Okay? So my first key is, first, don't feel like your English isn't good enough. Quite frankly, English people's English isn't good enough -er. And I said enough -er because I've heard people say things on television and on the street that's, quite frankly, really bad English, uh, where people don't use the L-Y when they're speaking with an adverb for things. They don't say, I speak slowly. They go, I speak slow. And they're okay with it, and there's no correction. So don't feel your English isn't good enough. You're learning. That's part of the process. So by changing this mental part, we'll get you into the small talk. Second, most people are nervous about starting conversations, whether this is in English or if this is in Spanish, Mandarin, Japanese, it doesn't matter. For the average person, talking to another human being when there is no reason to do so is a bit nervous because you don't know if they're in a good mood or a bad mood. They're going to be happy or angry or walk away from you, make you feel stupid. So it's not about the language. The other person is nervous as well. And sometimes as something you say that's funny or interesting makes them go, wow, and you've changed everything. Cool? All right. The third thing we have here in our, third, or our first key is, here's where I'm going to start talking about, you know, moving into the small talk. Have a plan. So I know this seems like I'm talking about the small talk, but I'm saying in order to not worry about your English being not good enough and overcoming being nervous, have three objectives for your small talk. Because if you know you just want, okay, to small talk, you want to have someone talk to you for one minute, and that's it. After the minute's done, you're finished. Once you hit that objective, you'll feel really good, and you'll feel confident and relaxed. The other person can relax, right? Or maybe you want to specifically get good at getting drawing information out of people, or get someone else to talk so you don't have to speak a lot. These are all different objectives. Another one could be that you speak most of the small talk conversation. And once you've obtained them, you can say, I've got a certain level I can move on. That will give you the confidence to forget not feeling like your English is good enough, forget about being nervous, and just get your job done, right? You brush your teeth in the morning, you don't get nervous, you just do it because it's something you've decided to do. Do it like that or making the bed. So that's my first key. Let's get our mental picture right or the mental thinking correct, okay? And having that objective will help with that. So how do you start small talk? Well, I kind of start leading in with the objectives, but having an objective isn't going to start it. So I'm going to give you something that you could notice and you should talk about. Yes, compliment and cold read, okay? A cold read, uh, I'll explain in a second, but compliment is easy. Say something to somebody. Now, if you're a male, uh, it's best to say things that aren't about, if you're talking to a female, obvious physical attributes. But there's always something you could look at. Like, for instance, I've got a really cool bracelet that my sister made for me. You see the blue, and you go, I love the blue in that bracelet. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. That has nothing to do with what I look like physically. But it is something I like, okay? So give a compliment. One of the best ways to do that, and I've taught this before, is... When you go out, next time you go out, just close your eyes, like look around, close your eyes, and try and think what captured your imagination right away, what things stood out. Open your eyes and look again. You will start noticing certain things made, brought your interest. And those things are usually designed to capture your interest. And almost every human being, when they wear jewelry or a shirt or shoes, they bought it because they liked it. So if you close your eyes and you can think of capturing that one thing and you bring it up, 
They'll genuinely think it's a genuine compliment and they'll like it. Nobody wants to hear you say something like, your face, it's like human, it's cool. That's not a compliment. Or other things you can talk about on female anatomy or male anatomy. It's obvious and it's like some people are quite frankly bored that you would bring it up. They want something interesting so they can give you their interest. Now remember, my interest is my time. My time is my life. So make it worthwhile for me to turn around and go, wow, I'm going to stop what I'm doing to talk to you because you're interesting. Okay, so compliment. Follow that up with what's called a cold read. A cold read, if you have ever been to a psychic, uh, they have the crystal ball. Uh, in your future, you will be married to a sheep. I mean, you will get married and have sheep. <laughs> they are guessing. They're looking at you and they're looking at what you're wearing, how you speak, and they're trying to make a guess about who you are. So make a cold read. Like, hey, that's a really cool shirt you're wearing. Say, sure. Do you golf? That's a cold read. You don't know. It is a golf shirt. This is for golfing. Yes, people wear this shirt so they don't get hit by balls. It's like, I'm here. Don't hit me. <laughs> okay. So you make a cold read. Like, that's a really cool shirt. I bet you are into golf. And I go, why? Well, yes, it is a golf shirt. I, I like golfing. <laughs> right? Now, you can also do that and ask a question like, do you golf often? So you've gone from, I like your shirt. Maybe you don't, but maybe you do. Right? Or you go, here's something. Maybe you don't like my shirt. And you go, that's an interesting shirt. Do you golf? <laughs> now, by saying interesting, you never said you liked it. That's up to me to interpret. So that's a little thing you keep in your back pocket. If someone says, do you like my food? Yeah, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> you went with the fish with bones and uh, nails. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> right? Didn't say I liked it. I said it was interesting. Okay? Back pocket. Keep it. Okay, so ask a question. So you say, you give me a compliment, right? Make a cold read. What would somebody like wear a shirt like this? Or why would they wear a shirt like this? Then ask a question. You've moved the conversation along that I will start talking and you've engaged me. Cool, right? Here's another one. Ask a question and, ask, and, uh, and a clue. What? Ask a question and a clue. Maybe you see this shirt and you go, okay, hold on a second. Um, that is an interesting shirt. Give me a clue about where you would wear something like that. And then I want, and then you go on and start talking more about them. So I uh, said, so give me a clue. It was like, um, uh, let's say Arnold Parma. You go, oh, of course, golf. You play golf. You like golfing. And because you've asked a question like, oh, I want to know where you got that from. But don't tell me. Don't tell me the answer. And this is the key. You ask the question and you say, but don't tell me the answer. Give me some information so I can guess. This is a very cool strategy because you've involved them in the conversation and they didn't see it coming. Because when I say, I want to know about your shirt, where did you get it? Right? Say, so that's it. I want to know about your shirt, where did you get it? But then you say, but don't tell me, don't tell me. Give me a clue, give me a clue. Uh, and then I would have to say, hmm, well, I was down in Florida and uh, there was a guy named Arnold Palmer and you go, Arnold Palmer, golf, golf, of course it's golf. Oh, that's. So you've involved me in that conversation. You made me part of your conversation. See how that is? You slid that in. That's really cool, right? So I'm more likely to speak with you because now I feel like it's my conversation, not just your conversation. Cool? All right. Now, the third part, which is the most important part in my opinion. Remember, it's called small talk. Now, I do these videos as a long talk. Small talk means short. It could be one minute. It could be five, maybe ten. But it's got to be short. Here, we started off with the beginning of your small talk, getting your mindset. Then I went into the meat of it, doing it, getting that conversation started. The most important part here to keep it small talk that keep people coming back so you can get more information to create these relationships is the talk, sorry, the touch, talk, walk phenomenon. Phenomenon. Here's what you do. You hit your objective. That's why I started with the objective. What was it? You got it. Boom. People always want more. Please keep that in mind. Never be the last person at a party. Never be the last person to sit at the dinner table. I'm going to say something terrible, so forgive me. It's called Loserville because you're hoping that everybody will stick around. It's done. The meal is done. The party's over. All the cool people left. You're the last one left. Don't be that person. So what do I mean? End the conversation early so people want to continue. You start a great conversation on physics or politics 
And they're, oh, that's so cool. And you go, I got to go. We'll talk another time. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to finish that conversation. You have now created that relationship we talked about. So how do we get that situation? I helped you with, have your objective. Meet your objective, then end that conversation. So that person's like, ah, 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 can we talk again? Get coffee? They want to initiate. And you've moved from small to long talk. Touch. Touch them on the arm. Touch on the arm. It's like, hey, you know what? Love to talk more, but I got to go to work. See you. A light touch on the arm. It indicates we're done now. Moving on. You're on your own. Talk. Touch and talk. So, hey, great talking to you. I'll uh, catch you next week and move. So as you touch, you talk and you keep. And this is the third part. Walk. Leave. Leave the area. Now they're in the middle of it. They might be like, oh, 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 okay. But now it's this thing about not completing a task. They're going to want to complete that conversation, complete where you are going on it, and they're looking forward to the next opportunity. So you've taken our small talk, and that's why I said it's important for you as a student to get practice, practice, practice. You've left the seed, like for growing a tree, you've left a seed to grow, that that person wants it to grow so you guys can come back together and start the relationship where you'll get more practice. Now, I added fun because I don't think, you're not here to use people. They're not here for it to practice with so you can get benefit and there's nothing there. The idea of fun is that two people share time together that they enjoy and they willingly engage and want to engage in. So this isn't trying to trick people. You had an objective, you made it, and you do want to make friends. We're going to do that by continuing the process. But you want to make it so that people who probably are having a difficult time understanding you want to help you improve. So it's a bonus for them because you are probably a wonderful person, let's face facts. And I'm not trying to, as we say, blow smoke up your ass, which means give you a compliment for no reason. The fact that you are trying to learn another language sets you apart from other people. It's just a fact. So you're probably a decent person, and the only problem that people may have is they can't communicate because you don't have the language. And in order to get that, you need to practice. So this is a tool to be used to help you practice so you can show people the person that's inside you so they can appreciate what you have to offer. Anyway. This class wouldn't be complete if I didn't give you bonus and homework. So let's go to the board and do that, right? Two-part relationship building questions with why. So what I mean by two-part, here's something you can slip into this compliments and read and all the stuff I was talking about over here. It's a technique where you're going to use two parts of a question. A lot of the questions we ask are very, very boring, and you've heard them before. Where do you live? Where do you work? Da, 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 da. But we can use why to take a simple question that's used often to transform it into something that brings something of the person to the conversation. Once again, once they're engaged, that means part of the conversation, they'll want to continue it. And in doing that, you'll get to know them and you can actually, as I said, build a relationship. So where do you work? At McDonald's. That conversation's done. But why do you work there? Well, I need the money, but yeah, yeah, but you can get money anywhere. Why do you work there? Well, my friend worked there and they got me the job. Oh, wow, cool, you got many friends there? See how you've taken something that would have been a boring one answer question? Money, and you've moved it. Why is a question that you can't say yes or no to? So when we do this question here to build a relationship, we don't want a yes or a no answer. We want them to provide a sentence that gives us something that we can build on. That's why it's called building relationships, to build the conversation. Here's another one. Where do you live? At home with my parents. Well, why do you live there? Well, I don't got any money to move out. Well, why not? Well, I was going to school uh, to study, uh, study photography. Oh, you're a photographer. That's the why. So we've taken this information and taken a question like, why do you live in Toronto? I don't know, it's a city, right? Sorry, right, where do you live? Toronto, why do you live in Toronto? Well, I got my job there. Well, what do you do for a living? And that, even though it's not to do, I'm like, what do you do for a living? I put in another question. So why can help us to use, lead us to places where we can get more information from the person and have a really cool and interesting conversation. And the best part is, like anything, when we invest in something, we want to see a return. When somebody invests in a conversation by saying more than yes or no, then they want it to continue because it makes no sense to be talking to you if they're not interested at all. Keep that, all right? So, 
What is the homework that we have today? Well, I would like you to write down two things that I'm, I am personally wearing that interest you. So remember I told you close your eyes and then open quickly. See what you can catch on me. Oh, by the way, maybe you can see these. Wow! <laughs> maybe not, but my shoes, they're kind of cool too. Just take a look at something you might say and go, oh, I'm really interested about that, then just bring it up, all right? But don't just do that with me, that's homework. And if you can think of something interesting that I'm gonna go, yeah, that's, that's cool. Like, uh, I don't know what you could possibly think about that I would have that's interesting, you know? Because I mean, I'm just like you, I'm an, I'm an ordinary person who, and I, I, I eat, I, uh, I, I breathe, I, um, I don't know, I, I do everything that you do, nine o'clock, oh, okay, interesting. You know, I do the same things you do. So I can't think of anything that you might've brought up that, uh, you don't smoke? Oh, okay, yeah. I can't think of a single thing that might interest you, it will be too big, but uh, you know, just in case, any two things you can think of. And write it in the comments, people will give you a thumbs up and let's give you 100 million points if you can think of two things that I might have shown you that's interesting. And then think about how you could incorporate that into a conversation with me, all right? And then take that same habit and go out in the street. Have fun, that's why I said have fun, play with it. Walk up to random people and just close your eyes open, have your objective there, ask the why question to see where it goes. I would love to hear some of the good things or I'm gonna say great things that happen to you when you tried it out. Anyway, it's been a really long talk and I do have to go, said the rabbit with his stopwatch, or not his watch, his pocket watch. All right, have a good one and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.